Hi, this is your host Sapil Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Moti Gindi, Chief Product Officer at Apiro. Moti, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, nice meeting you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you here. Today we are going to talk about X bombs, which you folks announced, if I'm not wrong, a week or so ago. But before we go there, I would love to know a bit about the company itself. Talk a bit about the company. Mission at Apiro is to, is to uh, secure your application code and the way that it is delivered into the cloud. The fact that we're doing that in an innovative way, the fact is that the growing complexity of how applications are being developed, deployed, coded, and delivered in the last years, mainly around this um, agile cloud-based application, is changing completely the way that uh, attack surface and attackers are going after applications. It creates a new, completely interconnected attack surface, which combine different types of components and their relations to each other. Current AppSec tools, which are siloed and standalone, looking only on open source, or only on secrets, or only on applicative codes, are actually creating an overwhelming list of uh, uh, alerts that are disconnected, hard to triage, and even harder to remediate and to fix later on. What we are doing in Apiro is actually creating a real-time inventory of your application, how it was being built, how it is uh, executed, how it is being uh, deployed. And based on that, we create the most important thing to alerts triage and remediation, which is context. Taking these disparate uh, uh, alerts, connecting them together, and making something which is uh, um, 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 sensible out of them, which translates to the risk of your business, uh, which allows you to choose the important things that you need to uh, to remediate and uh, fix them fast. That's what that's what we do in in Apiro. I talk to a lot of folks in uh, security space, and once in a while I'll I'll, I'll get guests, and they're like, you know what? The fact is, the security is actually not that complicated. It's actually very easy. All you have to do is the right thing. But the fact is that in the cloud a native, cloud centric world, security can be very very complicated. There are so many moving parts there. So from your perspective, if you look at the whole evolution of uh, from traditional IT space all the way to the cloud native, Kubernetes native world. So has security become easier or is more uh, challenging and complicated? It definitely became more complex. It became more complex for uh, um, three different reasons. One is um, the way that applications are being built, technically built, moved from a, a monolith application that was built by a small set of people to a distributed application that is built by hundreds sometimes or dozens of engineers that each one is re uh, relevant to its own subpart. This is the microservices type of uh, technology. This means that, as exactly you said, there are tons of moving parts which are changing dynamically and, uh, and not coordinately. The second thing is that the attack surface changed. The fact that the application is in the cloud and is based on running on modern cloud applications and servers and Kubernetes and identities and access uh, third-party services that may be out of the scope of the application, create simply new attack surfaces that were not uh, uh, um, existing at all when the application set uh, on a single machine in your uh, data center. And the third is the pace of the application. So not only how it is being built and how the, uh, the infrastructure it runs onto, but also the processes. Back in the days, an application delivery could have happened once every year or even two years or three years. You had time to plan and do threat modeling and pen test, etc. And before you actually had a one milestone in which this application is going into production. Now, this thing happens daily, dozens of times, hundreds of times, thousands of times with some of our customers. And the rate of the pace, it simply does not allow you to do a sequential process of understanding the risk and solving that. So... The combination of fast pace, very distributed methodologies, and complex infrastructure that is uh, 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 developed in parallel creates new attack surface, new blind spots, and complexities. So definitely, it's a long answer to say, it's definitely more complex to secure a modern app than a traditional app. One thing that we can agree on, which is actually easy, is to 
take at least inventory of what is running in your application or you know whatever it is i mean if you look at the assembly line of a car you know there are like thousands of pieces but they do know in the assembly line what's coming from where so that's where we talk about s bombs uh, actually a few years ago the Biden has mission, they also came up with an executor, uh, especially with the open source, so many moving parts t t are coming in. Can you talk about uh, the role S-bombs are playing in, once again, first of all, giving the visibility of what's there and to help companies with their security posture? Yeah, so actually, as, as you said, really, right, s -bomb was born based on the understanding that creating an inventory of an application that was built by multiple components coming from multiple development teams and some of them and actually a growing number of them outside of the development team from the supply chain is a really a tough task it's not easy to understand because it's changing as we said by multiple people multiple engineers multiple times a day and secondly it's very important task because that's the only way to understand your attack surface and because if you don't know what you have you cannot protect that so Esbom started on these foundationals, which are created a good motion across all of the industry to try and do exactly that. The challenge, and this is how uh, the, we'll talk about it in a minute, our move from Esbom to Xbom makes me so excited, is the fact that every vendor or sub part of the industry translated Esbom to what was comfortable to them. Currently, if you go to open source security vendors and ask what is an SBOM, they would say SBOM is the list of all of the open source uh, libraries that you are using. If you will go to an infrastructure company and ask them what is an SBOM, they will say an SBOM is the list of all of the infrastructure components you are using. They are both right and they are both not enough because in addition to the open source vulnerabilities that you are using and the infrastructure components that you are leveraging, there are so many other components that are building your attack surface, your data that, uh, that, uh, that is, is part of the application, your API set, how this thing is actually being built, how this application is being deployed, who developed it, did it went through pen test, did it went to security review, how it was a, a built a long time, like what happened a year ago, what happened a month ago, who edited this change, all of these things are creating together really the modern attack surface of an application and modern application in the cloud as we discussed. And this is where we think that SBOM was a great step in the right way, but it's not enough. It's, it's repeating the issue of looking on siloed sub elements of the overall attack surface. Excellent. Once again, thank you. And of course, I would love to talk about XBOM. But before we go there, what I do want to talk about, of course, you folks do a lot of open source, as we were discussing before the starting of this interview. There are a lot of open source, the Linux Foundation, they have SPDX, and a lot of projects are there, which are, and a lot of initiatives are there to us. Of course, we also need to increase awareness about S bombs. A lot of industries, a lot of companies, they're not comfortable with creating, generating S bombs, but there is a, you know, at least from the federal government, there's a mandate which is coming in. Uh, so before we talk about S bomb, let's talk about when it comes to adoption of S bombs or uh, when you look at, hey, uh, there are still some struggle going on. What do you see is happening in the market? Because we have to also consider where the market is and then try to lower the barrier of entry so that, you know, this doesn't become another hurdle or, you know, another task for the developers. It is something easier. So let's let's see where the market is in terms of adoption of these bombs. Right. So I say what we see from also from our customers, the market in general. I think the understanding of uh, the complexity of modern supply chain plus regulations, uh, plus standards, create a, um, a situation in, in, in increasing pace that every company understand that SBOM is not only a liability, something they need to check the box and they actually and, and do, but it's actually a value that only by creating a, an accurate picture of what they have, they can actually implement the core, serve, a core, a core value of application security, which is understanding which vulnerabilities are important, where are these vulnerabilities and how to fix them? So what we see, what I see, is that SBOM that started as, oh my God, we need to do this thing because of regulation, to actually something more and more customers are saying, I need that 
for my own benefit, for my own transparency, for my own efficiency, for my own processes, and I want it to be as accurate as possible and frictionless as possible, which comes to the, your second part of the question. Um, SBOM cannot be created by developers. That doesn't make sense, not the pro point of view of uh, um, um, productivity, as you said, and uh, overwhelming the developer with yet another more chart uh, um, a role, but also from the point of view of accuracy. The only way to create an accurate SBOM is actually looking at the entire picture. And remember that every developer is seeing part of the picture, the service they are responsible for. So really the right scalable way, durable way to create an SBOM is by doing it automatically as part of your development processes, build processes and deployment processes and making it a background a, a process within the company and using technology that allow you to do that. When you're talking about uh, SBOMs earlier, you did uh, you know talk about XBOM and uh, did a you know, slight comparison there, but I do want to go a bit deeper into uh, the, the launch of XBOM, uh, what additional value is bringing, uh, and if you can also compare, hey, these were some of the shortfalls or shortcomings of traditional S bombs, and we are kind of you know overcoming those. Yes, and uh, thank you for the question. And this is again where I get I got I got excited. So we understood, I think, based on the previous uh, comments, that uh, this, the modern application is is a complex beast that it changes constantly and 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 is developed in a distributed way. And part of the attack surface is the way that is developed and the way that it is deployed. I think I also try to convey the point that understanding that is a key part in order to create a security program. Without understanding how your application is being built, you don't know what you have and you can't secure what you don't know. So you have to know what you have. And this is exactly what SBOM is saying and also executive governments say. You need to have a provenance and understanding of how your application is being built and executed and, and, and uh, deployed. The challenge with SBOM that it's a partial view. It's if I take your analogy of the car, it's uh, really on the right uh, track, but it shows you only how, how your tires are being built and how your wheel is being built, but the engine is left. And there is no connection between how the engine is being built and the, uh, the tires and the wheels, because it's clear that all of them are creating one car. We think that that's exactly the challenge with existing SBOM. It allows you a li flat list of your vulnerabilities, uh, open source, sorry, vulnerabilities, or a flat list of your infrastructure components. But really, a modern application is the combination of all of these plus many more, as I said earlier. The data that you are managing, the function that you have, the APIs that you are using, the, the, uh, the private information, uh, the PII that is part of your application. And if you ask a software architect how your application is being built, he won't give you a list of things. He, he or she will give you a graph usually. Here is a module that connects to this API, that connects to this data model, that connects uh, uh, to this uh, uh, database that is deployed to this cluster, et cetera, et cetera. XBOM is exactly that. It's taking the way that a human being, a so software architect is thinking about an application and making it automatically, automatic, daily and, uh, uh, sorry, um, um, a, a, a continuous in order to uh, follow this structure with every commit and every code change that is happening thousands and, uh, and uh, hundreds and thousands of times a day. So when we in Apura are coming with the concept of XBOM, we are trying to say to customers and to application securities and to application engineers, Look at the entire set of your application, which is the combination of everything, all of the things that I said, components, API, code modules, developer behaviors, how it, they are being deployed, data models, etc. Here is the snapshot of your application. Here are all of the components, how they are connected. And here are all of the vulnerabilities and risks that exist across all, all of this application inventory. So we are taking the concept of SBOM and following exactly them, but expanding them beyond open source only or infrastructure only to everything that the code is based on. And for a long time, this is the thing that we are building in Apiro, a behind the scene. And now based on customer feedback and understanding the value of it, we are saying to customers, here is your capability now to understand how your application is really being built and what is your real 
a attack surface. Can you talk about the availability of X bomb and how you know customers can consume him? It's uh, like a combination of two things that we are trying to do. One is educate and help and push the industry in order uh, for everyone that is in our industry to uh, be able to create an X bomb in order for customers to uh, to produce it. Uh, for order for customers to uh, consume it, sorry. Uh, produce an X-Bomb in order for customers to consume it, in order for customers to have better transparency and better understanding of their attack surface. In parallel, for customers that are using our product, um, uh, Apero Cloud Application Security uh, Platform, we are supporting x out of the box. Uh, for every application that we are protecting, every developer and every development environment that we are protecting, you are able both to export your X-Bomb, X-Bomb um, of the application and also query and ask questions within the system about the X-Bomb of the application. For example, what are all of my APIs that are touching sensitive data that are not authenticated? So it's a both, uh, we are trying here to create both a, 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 an evolution into the, of the market into where we think all vendors of our type should go, and in parallel provide a product capability within a pure cloud application secure platform to export and to query uh, XBOM for the value of our customers. It may be unrelated, but I also quickly want to talk about uh, what do you think about standards? Because when we look at SBOMs, we are looking at components, metadata. There are different you know, foundations. There are different, stand, not standards, but different projects like uh, Cyclone DX is there, SPDX is there. There are so many others. Um, what are the thoughts on uh, some standardizations around SBOMs? We are not in the business of creating a new standard and a new way to actually a, 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 a new formats, sorry. We are not in the business of creating new formats and a new way uh, to expose data. And uh, there are actually do good standards like Cy- uh, uh, Cyclone DX coming from OWASP, for example, is a really good standard. The issue, a, a standard and a capability to create, com- to, um, create and present complex relation between different software components. We think that the main thing is around the content within this uh, standard. So the way that I or we think about that is uh, a good standard, for example, for XBOM or format is a Cyclone DB or Salsa-based uh, uh, standards. The key thing is to agree in the industry about the components and the content that is there. And if you look at Cyclone DX uh, recent uh, uh, standards, uh, they are moving away by themselves from looking only on open source or sub elements of the system into actually saying the full attack surface of a system is the combination of, uh, I'm quoting, modules and components and uh, connections and data between them. And XBOM is actually a manifest. Moti, thank you so much for taking time out today. Of course, talk about XBOM, but more importantly, talk about the larger, you know, with S-bombs, the adoption, the challenges. Thanks for all those insights, and I would love to have you back on the show again. Thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity, and, you know, for me to allow me to express my excitement on what we are doing with XBOM, hopefully helping customers and enterprises and everyone that is writing code and securing it. So thank you again.